So I made some chocolate frozen custard, which of course is just ice cream with egg yolks. And in my perpetual quest to use the whole egg, I used the whites to make marshmallow cream and then I marbled them together. Freeze, then let it soften up a few minutes and you've got an unusual frozen dessert with kind of sloppy baked Alaska vibes. And I swear this part is purely incidental, but it is quite high in protein and low in fat as desserts go. Just don't think about the sugar. I'll get four pints out of half a dozen eggs, and I pierced the yolk, so I gotta fish it out ASAP. Phew! Turns out you can whip egg whites with a little yolk in them, but not much. I'll be more careful with the remaining five, and I increasingly think that the best way to separate eggs is to just pass them back and forth between your hands, let the whites slip out. Yolks go into the smaller of the two bowls, that's important. You could skip this, but I wanted the ice cream to have a frozen pudding vibe. The way that you get that is with starch, so just a teaspoon of starch right on the yolks. And I'm going to do a quarter cup, 25 grams of cocoa powder. You could use less. And a quarter cup, 50 grams of granulated sugar. That's normally not enough for this much ice cream, but the marshmallow is going to be super sweet, so got to think about balance. Going to give my hand mixer a real workout today, just bash the lumps out of that before we loosen it up with milk and cream. Actually, I'm just going to use this can of evaporated milk. More protein, more flavor than regular milk, and normally you'd need at least some cream to keep this soft after it freezes, but the texture is going to be broken up by the marshmallow, so it's going to be fine. That's a cup and a half, 350 mils in the can, and now we just need to beat this as it slowly comes up to a simmer and thickens. You can be civilized and do this in a pan if you want. That'd be safer in every sense of the word, but I think it's pretty easy to cook custard in almost anything that's heat safe as long as you keep it moving and keep the heat low. Let it happen slowly. Yes, there's some stuff getting overcooked on the sides. No, I did not notice it at all in the final product. As it heats up, first you'll see the egg yolks thicken, and then when it gets a little hotter, you'll start to see some steam escaping, and that's when the cornstarch thickens. We are there. Quickest way to cool it down at this stage is just to keep it moving, exchanging heat with the atmosphere. Give it a taste. Ooh, it could use a tiny pinch of salt. Churn this in an ice cream machine if you've got one, but I'm just going to use the still freeze method today where you just throw it in the freezer and then you check on it periodically. When it's icing up around the edges, you just hit it with the beaters to break up the big ice crystals and to evenly distribute the cold. Yes, I know you're technically distributing heat, but that's less intuitive. While I'm waiting for that to turn to ice cream, I think I'll enjoy a cold beverage from Trade Coffee, sponsor of this video. Yes, I did say cold in reference to uh, Trade Coffee. My trade subscription is my source for a rotating cast of wonderful, surprising coffees that get sent to me directly from some of the best independent roasters all around the United States. Trade is into the cold coffee game now too, and not a day too soon as it's getting rather warm around here. So they're sending me some cold brew like this. Oh God, so delicious. Cold brew is coffee that has um, not actually been brewed, it's been steeped, which means they just take the grounds and they let it sit in like room temperature water for a long time, a day, two days, and that results in a really different kind of extraction. Actually a stronger product in a number of ways, I think. In the absence of heat, there's a lot of flavor molecules that remain kind of pure and unchanged, and boy, it is just so delicious to drink in the summertime. And uh, hey, if we're not putting cream into the iced cream, we could put it into the coffee. I don't do that often, but uh, hey, watch the storm roll in, drink this. I can do that. And they're also sending me kits for making iced coffee, which is a different thing. Iced coffee is coffee that has been brewed conventionally using hot water, but then chilled down. You can rapidly chill it down with this thing here. Hit my link in the description. Go to drinktrade.com slash ragusia. Check out everything that you can get. And if you want to sign up for a monthly subscription like the kind I have, right now it's 30% off your first month at drinktrade.com slash ragusia. Thank you, Trade, for helping me stay chill this summer. Now let's see how our ice cream is chilling. Okay, I've stirred like five times over two hours, and when it gets to that cookie dough texture, you're really ready to start whipping it. Whip air into it. It's got to be cold enough and therefore solid enough to retain some bubbles. But another characteristic of frozen custard is that it's usually denser than ice cream, so I think that's good enough. Delicious. And you can just eat that. In the freezer it goes. Now that I can clean my beaters, I can make the Italian meringue, which is the same thing as marshmallow fluff, of course. Three quarters of a cup of sugar, 150 grams in a pan and then maybe a quarter cup of corn syrup, which will keep everything from crystallizing in the freezer. Just enough water to get everything started dissolving, and then we need to bring it to a boil. I'll sprinkle some cream of tartar into my half a dozen egg whites. Not necessary, but gets you a more stable foam, and then I'll just beat that until I get peaks. It's probably not necessary to stir that syrup, but I get nervous. 
A couple of minutes later and there's the peaks. Again, to keep this foam stable in the freezer, I'm gonna scatter on like a teaspoon of starch and beat that in until it disappears. This is less sugar syrup than you would normally use for this many egg whites, and it's just because otherwise this dessert is gonna be too sweet, and the marshmallow component is gonna be too soft in the freezer, so you wanna use less sugar. Sugar is an antifreeze. For Italian meringue, you want 240 Fahrenheit, 115 C, which it cannot hit until it is boiled out all but a little bit of water, which is why it really doesn't matter how much water you put in there in the beginning. Just wait for the temperature, and we are there. I used to drizzle this into the eggs, but I found that it's safer in every sense of the word to just dump it in. You can do that as long as you immediately start beating. Carefully beat that dangerously hot syrup into the eggs. It'll cook the eggs and gelatinize the starch. When it's cooled to the point where I can touch it, I'll stir in a big glug of vanilla, and then I'll churn it the exact same way as I did the ice cream in the freezer until it starts to firm up. Beat it before it gets too solid just to keep it soft and to distribute the cold. Marshmallow is full of air, and air is a great insulator, so this will not cool down as fast as ice cream, and that's just fine. We don't need it to get cold enough to whip. It's already been whipped. We just need to cool it down to where it won't immediately melt the custard. Speaking of which, we're ready to mix these two together, but first I'll need to loosen this back up again, just smash it and bring in some heat from the air until it cools back down to a swirlable texture. Man, that is pretty. And no cream! Chilled containers, really helpful for any ice cream recipe. It keeps the ice cream from immediately melting and collapsing around the edges. Half the custard into each, half the meringue into each, and then I'll just use my spoon handle to swirl these. You don't want any big chunks of chocolate. It's gonna freeze up too firm. You want thin ribbons of chocolate running through the marshmallow, so stir a lot. Stir just short of making this totally homogenous. Eat now like soft serve or cover and let harden overnight. This definitely scoops better if you let it warm up a few minutes. I say just let the marshmallow phase go gooey. It contrasts really beautifully with the almost icy texture of the chocolate phase. It's weird, it's unusual, but it's really great and it makes efficient use of both ingredients and dishes, which is perhaps a little more gratifying to me than it logically should be. But leave me alone, let me enjoy my high protein ice cream with zero cream. Now that doesn't matter that much really. <laughs> Sugar's gonna do you in no matter what.